to be here. My name is Nisa Lebo Piri to be your moderator. And it's always exciting to hold conversations like this. And um, uh, we, we are not writing off 2020, I want to say that. And so what a way to come together and just learn a few things here and there from industry heads and uh, not just from Zambia, but we're stretching out in Southern Africa and see what we can learn. So also we want you to have um, an opportunity to network. What I mean by that is virtual networking is very possible. So whether you're on Facebook, whichever platform you are watching us, uh, please feel free to leave in the comment box where you are and what you do. Somebody might just be looking for your uh, service or product. So who knows what could happen. So like I said, my name is Nisa Lebo Piri in Kitwe, and I am a TV and radio broadcaster and producer. My last engagement was at Flavor FM where I worked for five years and ZNBC TV. So currently I'm working as a content producer for a media house here in Kitwe and I'm the TEDx Nkana co-organizer and team lead currently pushing towards TEDx in Kana 2020 this November. So before we introduce our panel for today or before they tell us a little bit more about what they do, I'm just going to ask um, the hub manager from uh, Social Enterprise Academy Zambia, Lekumbi, to just tell us a little bit more about what they do for those people that may not be uh, in light as to what they do at the Social Enterprise Academy Zambia. Lekumbi, good morning to you. You. Good morning, Niza. Uh, from sunny Lusaka. I'm actually at the Hive at Bongo <laughs> Hive. Um, nice. My name is Likumbi Kapia, and as Niza said, I'm the hub manager for the Social Enterprise Academy program. It's a learning and development program specifically for social entrepreneurs and creatives that's actually implemented by Bongo Hive, uh, Zambia's first innovation and tech hub. And people often don't get that Bongo Hive SEA connection, but the Social Enterprise Academy is a Bongo Hive program. And um, it's quite exciting. For the last two and a half years, we've been supporting people in the social and creative space. And particularly last year, we actually branched out and with partnering with the British Council, run a boot camp for young creatives in four cities, three countries. So it was in Malawi, Mozambique, and in Zambia, we did actually Kitwe and Lusaka, Niza was there. And, and we're excited to be rolling out a, a digital version of that uh, later this year. But one thing we do say we do at Bongo Hive is we work with great minds building viable solutions that change the world. And those great minds are not just in the tech or um, in, in the agri space, they can also be in the creative space. And as today's panel shows, there's some really great minds we have uh, right across the, the region. Um, I'm really excited to hear what um, each panelist has to stay and they particularly come from ranging from the corporate space to the connector space with Dylan and Chenesai, who's just a powerhouse in her own right. Um, but what I really want to do is have what we do at Bongo is really just create the platforms for these conversations, not just supporting through our programs, but also having these discussions with industry leads. So I'm really excited to see what we can learn uh, and what we can share with each other uh, this morning. So Niza, do take it away. I don't want to take too much time. Thank you so much. And um, again, just some house views. We do understand that there might be some questions along the way. So if you uh, look at your screen, and I know there are different platforms, but there's Q&A. So if you click there, you can actually leave your questions. We'll try by all means to read all uh, your questions and have them answered uh, right as we go on. And so um, again, let's have a good time together as we learn and um, again, ask your questions. So we'll just get straight into it and um, get to meet our panel as they will introduce themselves, the organizations they represent and what these organizations do. And I'd like to start uh, with uh, Peter. Peter, we'll start with you. Please tell us about yourself and what you do. Thank you and good morning. I'm excited to be doing these, uh, these webinars. It's um, something new for an old horse like me, but uh, I'm, I'm beginning to learn that actually in many, many ways, these things are, are better than, to, to many, in many ways, better than actual conferences and seminars right. uh, in terms of efficiency and also being able to get information afterwards. Yes, my name's Peter. I'm living in Lusaka. I'm actually in my office here in Lusaka. Um, we're with uh, Fulcrum, uh, YNR. We are an advertising agency. Uh, been around in Zambia for more than 30 years handling many local and international brands, uh, full service agency. Um, my role in the agency is of uh, creative and strategy, more on strategy these days, um, but definitely from a creative background, I'm a copywriter at heart. 
Um, despite looking at me the way I look, I'm actually truly Zambian. I was born in Kitwe. Um, right. I went, I went to Lusaka Boys School, then um, mm -hmm. went to Kamwala Secondary School, which surprises a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> from there, I moved just across the road to University of Zambia, which I, I did my degree in English and history. I was a teacher for a very brief time. Uh, I had a stint playing golf as well for a time. Then I was lucky enough to go and do my master's in journalism in Ohio. Um, and within that's when I started ad studying advertising. That's when advertising uh, is, is taught in the School of Communication. So I got my master's in journalism from there. Uh, came back here, uh, worked in South Africa for Young and Rubicum for a couple of years and then decided no, Zambia's home, so I came back here and I've been running the agency ever since. So that's amazing. Uh, amazing. I really love to allow people to introduce themselves. Awesome. I really love to allow people to every time they introduce themselves. I really didn't know you were from Kitwe, so that's some new and good information for me. Thank you for sharing that. And so we'll move on to Dylan, uh, who's also going to tell us a little bit about himself and what he does. Dylan, please. Hi, everyone. Are you guys well? Uh, can you hear me properly? Yes, you're loud oh. and clear. Thank you. All right. Cool. So my name is Dylan Aspiri. Uh, I was Zimbabwean born, born in Kwekwe, Zimbabwe, uh, and then recently moved, well, not recently, like 16 years ago, moved to South Africa. Uh, did my high school here in South Africa and my university. I started business IT, uh, CTI corresponding to the University of Greenwich. Uh, and then through that, I started uh, working in the creative industry and tech industry together. Uh, and then in 2011, I founded Creative Nestlings, uh, which is a creative network uh, and then a research and development uh, agency that works primarily in the creative industry, working with young people and helping young people navigate the creative journey across Africa and the diaspora. Uh, we work primarily on projects that, that have to do with uh, connecting creative to opportunities, educating creatives, uh, and also connecting clients and uh, cultural institutions to the creative community on the ground across Africa and the diaspora. Uh, we're currently working on using technology to better connect uh, young people to opportunities and each other and uh, better manage their work and their business side of, of the creative of the creative life, basically. And also we're doing research on the creative economy and see how can we grow it, how can we make it better, and how, how big is the creative economy currently in Africa? That's our, our main work currently. Awesome. That is very amazing. And I might as well just start with you. Uh, you're having this platform and in the past I've come across information on how you've been hosting and holding different um, events across Africa, just bringing creatives together. The past six months has been very, very confusing for a lot of people in between trying to figure out what COVID is to trying to figure out how to keep businesses afloat, especially creative businesses. What are some of the shocks that your business in particular, Dylan, has experienced in the past few months or since the pandemic? I think uh, not necessarily a shock, but just a change in, in, in focus. Our activities right. require us to, to be on the ground meeting creators on, on a daily basis. So we're having meetings with creators mm -hmm. in different parts of the continent. That's our work, right, through our network. So we have to have coffees with them, meetings with them, advising them and all that kind of stuff. And then hosting those regular events uh, physically and stuff has been, we've, we've missed that. So funny enough, yesterday actually we had our first event, in-person event uh, as part of the global business, the uh, global business wave, the great, the great wave uh, by House of Business, House of Beautiful Business. So that was interesting to, 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 to do a physical event featuring creatives and, and, and businesses and MBA students after such a long time. So, and then, when, when COVID hit, we automatically navigated our way to digital. So using Instagram Live, Facebook Live, yeah. a lot of Zoom calls. I'm, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of, of Instagram Lives and Facebook Lives because I, I, I do prefer that face-to-face -face, uh, engagement and having the conversation with the person is always amazing. But I think this has shown that actually the content can actually be smaller because then you're able to just call a person, uh, reach out to a person immediately and they can get back to you without necessarily having to fly there and talk to them yeah. there, all that kind of stuff. So, so from a cost perspective, it's been quite easier in terms of navigating. Mm -hmm. uh, from a financial perspective, I mean, the, the whole world was shut down. So of course we were not necessarily generating the revenue that we would normally would have generated through our talks, through our partnerships and all that kind of stuff. But I think mm -hmm. it, it helped us refocus 
uh, our energies basically to say, okay, actually we've been ignoring digital. We've been, it's always been, it's always been an extra, right? Digital, but now it's become really a, a mainstay of, of, of creative nestlings. And now we are building an app or finalizing our app that we're building. That's going to allow us to navigate that a bit easier. We pro- kept postponing it, but I think now we're saying, okay, actually we do need this technology platform to be yeah. hands on, to be available because uh, we can't necessarily always travel all the time, clearly. So mm-hmm. I think that, that's, been, that's been what's been happening with us as creative nestlings, yeah. Okay, uh, Peter, what has been happening at Y&R? Uh, what are some of the things that you've had to change? What are the objectives that have really influenced uh, these decisions? Well, um, you know, when we were, when everybody was told to go home and separate and social distance as much as possible, I uh, called all the staff and of course it struck me that things are not going to be normal and everybody was standing in like a, a meter apart and I said to them, okay, mm-hmm. it's quite an emotional discussion. I, uh, I said, look, we don't know what's on the horizon. We don't know where we're going. Um, yeah. uh, the predictions were dire globally. Africa was going to be hit the hardest. And um, so we, the people all dispersed. They all went home, uh, took their computers. Um, and, and really, the team responded amazingly well. Um, I think uh, we've learned a lot. Uh, our, our way of doing business has, has fundamentally changed now. Um, mm-hmm. And the guys and uh, the ladies in the studio, and the, when I say the guys, I mean everybody, they um, all worked hard. We all check in every morning, greet each other, how are you doing? Um, we haven't really suffered business-wise, thankfully, because... Okay. Um, We've been migrating towards much more digital content and social media pages and um, mm-hmm. social uh, social media content. Obviously, we we're affected because of not being able to produce uh, television commercials because of, of, mm-hmm. of social distancing. So, in fact, one of the things that's happened in the industry is that uh, there's been an explosion in uh, animated videos around the world. In yes. fact, not just in Zambia. In Zambia, yeah. at the moment, you try and get an animated video done, it's almost impossible. Uh, because everybody's up to their eyeballs, because doing shoots is not as easy as it used to be. Of course, that's changing yeah, back now yeah. as, we, as things seem to be easing off. But um, yeah, I think everybody's been responsible. Everybody's, um, one of the issues, of course, we had was with uh, load shedding when people don't have generators at home. And so that yeah. was like, that was really a challenge. But, and I think uh, from a creative point of view, a lot of people preferred the freedom of being able to work whenever they wanted to work, work in the middle of the night, um, mm-hmm. send concepts through whenever, start working at seven o'clock and, and, and take off. So we, we've never been sticklers for, for that nine to five kind of regime because I've always believed that so, lo- so long as the work is done, it doesn't really matter when you work. Right. And now, I think now even more that's true. We were thinking mm-hmm. about maybe getting bigger offices, but certainly that's not on the cards now. Right. Uh, that is, that is another, another. in fact, what we're going to do is strip out some of the offices and make them common workstations. People can come and go. But of course, one of the things, you know, the time flies, it's been like eight months or whenever. And, you know, when you, it, it, like uh, Dylan was saying, you, for the creative chemistry to really get going, you have to have that, um, that personal interaction. And a lot of the non-verbal cues and the laughter and everything yeah. when you're doing yeah. a brainstorming session, those are what makes the, the, the ads, the ideas come up, you know? And as much as somebody can say, if there was a great headline or it was a good concept, as much as somebody can say, I thought of that, um, very often it's only because of what somebody else said beforehand that made you think of that. And so we've suffered a little bit so we, uh, from, from trying to brainstorm from a distance because you really miss that closeness of the team. Uh, and, you know, uh, um, so we've suffered a little bit like that, but we're working out, working ways, we're working out ways of getting around that. Um, so there's no substitute for impersonal uh, uh, ideation, uh, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and not everybody, I'm one of the world's worst. I mean, if I'm in a conversation with people and I'm, I come up with ideas left, right and center, you know, with the team, mm-hmm. Because when you're sitting by yourself with a blank piece of paper, it's not quite so easy. So, <laughs> That's true. Um, so as creators, I'm sure we all we all miss that miss that interaction. But sometimes some guys, some people love to work alone. They love to um, they love to uh, 
just uh, sweat it out uh, and keep pushing until until something pops up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we have we have been affected, but I would say overall in a positive way. Right. Right. I appreciate that we can all acknowledge the fact that as creators, that contact is very necessary. I think that's where we pick on ideas. That's where we get inspiration. That's where we, it's, it's so important also to bounce ideas. I know I really thrive around people and being able to bounce ideas off people. So I, I, I relate with that part, it being hard and virtual. It does the work, but not so much, but we're still striving all the same. So I'm going to stick with Peter and you have given us an idea of what has happened with your uh, permanent uh, members of staff but let's talk about the third party um, p- these are creatives to be particular how exactly um, has it been like working with third parties and just being uh, making sure that you do you're still keeping them in business in that they are providing certain services with you have you been able to keep them have you had to let go of some what are some of the um, skills that you're looking out for Well, you know, I've always run our business, this business, basically, well, I, we've always run this business based on the uh, the understanding that our core business is uh, where we are creative ideation, a creative creative company. So Mm -hmm. we're not a production company. Okay. Okay, We have a studio and we do loads of print ads and everything. But anyway, motion is the new print now. So I suppose we will become a production in, in a way. So we've always, we've always had a network of suppliers. Uh, mm-hmm. like guys who make TV commercials, uh, audios, recording people, voiceover artists, motion graphics guys, illustrators, image retouchers. So that network has been there. And I think uh, they've all been very, very responsive, knowing that um, knowing that business is, is on, has been really severely impacted. I mean, the tourism industry has been decimated. The airline industry has been mm-hmm. decimated. So... All of that has gone from the market for the for the interim, um, and uh, so they've been very responsive. We we've also discovered strangely that, um, and, and that and this could be an opportunity for for Zambian creators as well that you can reach out to networks like Fiverr and some other networks where freelancers are working in Pakistan, they're working in uh, in um, Turkey. They're working in Bangladesh. I've just sent some pictures to Bangladesh for retouching and stuff. So, right. so that opportunity is also there for Zambians to uh, mm-hmm. to to reach out and get and create uh, not Zambians but Africans, whatever, to to set themselves up on those on those networks or on those hubs or or uh, part of Dylan's team. I'm sure there's they're working on creating those collective online uh, uh, production services. Um, so we've realized, we've learned now that you don't have to be sitting next to the people all the time. So suddenly we're able to use that global creative industry um, with very reasonable prices and, and very, very fast turnaround times. Um, and of course, other markets have been decimated much more than, than, than ours necessarily. So there's a lot of, not hungry, but there's a lot of people there that want to be doing work, you know, yeah. and uh, so the response has been very good and also uh, freelancers in Zambia uh, I think everybody's been very very responsive we haven't we haven't let any staff go we've um, like I said we've tried to keep the, the core team as small as possible always yeah right right okay I, I was smiling when you mentioned that you could be in Zambia or any part of Africa and still reach out to other parts and offer your services I had gone to Twitter and requested for recommendations particularly for an app developer to this day I still get inbox or DMs uh, from uh, developers in India offering yeah. their service are you still yeah. looking for one so I, I really love that you mentioned that so that's quite interesting and um, are there ways that um because you deal with corporate so are there ways or are there certain decisions that businesses can make to ensure that they are still be it connecting and doing business uh with creatives are there any hard decisions that they have to make you're talking about keeping a very small team uh and in thinking about freelancers what can businesses do to still include them? Peter. Well, I think, um, you know, I think that, that also we'll be able to, um, I think, you know, I think if, if 
if, if freelancers are able to collaborate more on a, on a one, of the, one of the sides of our business is we're always pitching for, for, for clients, okay? Uh, that's changed a little bit of late now that procure, procurement has come into the picture, but it's always been about the creative idea and the big idea that you sell or the, the, uh, the communication strategy that you develop. So um, I think that it would be good if, um, and, and there's mixed views about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, you don't go to five architects and ask them to come up with a concept for your house and then choose which one you like. But somehow yeah. in the advertising industry, it seems to be that way. So I would encourage I would encourage freelancers to be more uh, to be more uh, outward going in terms of doing on spec, helping agencies or, or coming up with concepts rather than sitting back and, and, and waiting just for the brief and then. So there's got to be okay. a lot more flexibility and a lot more collaboration. I think, I think that we found that all over the world. You know, it's not necessarily about the quick back here or there it's about building a relationship that's going to build something right. that's more sustainable in the long term mm -hmm. yeah. okay all right thank you so much for that i'll turn to uh dylan and talking about creative nestlings uh bringing people together and creating a platform where if i'm looking for any particular service or product in africa i go there and i find them now when it comes to creatives listing their services and products onto your platform i'm interested to know have you observed any changes in how the package or how they sell themselves and this is in line with uh marketing are there any changes in how uh, creators are listing themselves or sharing their profiles and what they do? I think because um, we're, we're not public yet in terms of the platform itself. Uh, okay. so we've only, we're using a test space of 200 users for now uh, that are mm -hmm. located in Kenya, Ghana, Uganda, uh, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, and some in Zambia. All right. And, and okay. what we've seen there, and this happened just before COVID-19, so there was already a, a big push towards uh, moving digital so so making sure that your platform is centralized and all that kind of stuff so we're seeing a lot more creatives mm -hmm. figuring out like we're seeing okay there's value in centralizing your portfolio and and your and your, and your rates basically and also comparing your rates to peers is, is a big thing right lately we're getting a lot of requests from other creators saying hey uh, what are people charging out there so how do we see that so we can i can have some sort of baseline because i'm a bit lost in terms of uh pricing and stuff so start seeing that as a trend that people are looking to see okay how can they benchmark against some mm -hmm. of the creators around them are in their own community in their own cities towns and countries and stuff so we've seen that as a big push towards that centralization in terms of jobs we actually see that there's a lot of jobs out there uh, that, are, that are looking for creative talent in africa but i think it's just that they're just being posted everywhere so they're not necessarily reaching re the relevant uh people all the time so, so yeah. we're looking at the, how do you make sure that, that whenever a job is posted you know you syndicate that data into one platform so we're looking at that kind of technology and stuff because the work is out there, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of creative work being, there's a lot of clients looking for, for logo design, photography, retouching, and there's a lot of great mm -hmm. talent in Africa, right? Just about that right. matchmaking be better, I think, uh, in terms of the continent. So creators being available. So creators, like mentioned, Peter mentioned, creators are uh, collaborating more often, not necessarily for pay, but just to get their portfolios and new skill sets uh, learned and new ways of working learned and stuff. Because you find a lot of creators are talented, but then their portfolio is not necessarily big because they're waiting for the client to do that project. Whereas they should be, mm -hmm. you know, collaborating so they can have that portfolio available and stuff. But we've been seeing a, a lot of move towards that centralization of portfolio. Our uh, clients are looking like I mean, we've been helping clients cast for directors here in South Africa for ads, uh, helping clients to cast for photographers, writers. Uh, app developers and stuff, which is strange because app development is big in Africa, but then we don't actually have a, a lot of good full stack developers. We have a lot of developers that know how to do front end, back end, and all that kind of stuff, but we don't really have, um, also that means the market itself, we don't really have that many big app platforms coming out of Africa and stuff yet. So there, there hasn't really been that much uh, in terms of the full stack developers, freelance full stack developers. So we're starting to see and reaching out and looking for those more. Uh, looks developers that can build end to end, all that kind of stuff. So, but in terms of trends, yeah, we're seeing a lot more people wanting to be available on uh, on digital platforms. I mean, Fiverr is a good example, but we're not seeing that many African creators on, on Fiverr, you know, because I think there's a need for a more localized version of that, I think, to the continent, because uh, Fiverr is very European and global and stuff. Um, and then there's other platforms like Underpinned that only focus on the UK and all that kind of stuff. I think there's an, what we are building is to build that 
version of a five, uh, not necessarily as big, but a continental based one. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're working on currently. Okay. All right. There's just something that you've mentioned uh, when it comes to uh, creatives listing their businesses online and so that they are visible and we're able to find them. I want to get back to Peter quickly uh, because you're running an agency and I just want to find out how exactly do companies or agencies go about finding creatives when they're looking for certain services and products? Where do they look? Uh, maybe you can make a comment as concerns uh, Zambia. Where do they look? Yeah, that's that's a that's a huge thing because um, mm -hmm. it's a very good question, and uh, you know you can't just put an ad on a website saying we're looking for Zambia for a copywriter that's got global that's got experience mm -hmm. in uh, mobile network operators or or beer or whatever, uh, because mm -hmm. the industry is very young and um, that kind of talent pool, established talent pool with a small agency base. Does, doesn't really exist that much in Zambia. So what we've done is like we went actually to Bongo Hive and we got uh, some uh, tech-minded tech creatives. We had three people come in for internships and mm -hmm. um, one of them has joined us. She's now a social content uh, developer. She's, uh, she's doing um, websites for people. She's even um, she's just learning all around uh, creative skills, digital creative skills. So mm -hmm. that's that's where we look, and and also I'm looking for, when I look for people, I need guys who are going to do content for a, a youth brand on social media. So I go to TikTok and I find who's doing very funny and creative videos, who's showing that they've got an understanding of communication, somebody that's got right. that passion for telling a story, and that. There are, you know, TikTok actually changed my view of creativity completely. Right. I always used to think that, you know, you're never too old to learn. I always used to think that, well, um, you know, we're the special creative people in the world. And then you see all these people doing stuff on TikTok, which is either yeah. funny or interesting or entertaining or, or informative. And you, you realize, no, actually, everybody's creative. So, so I look on social media, those platforms for uh, to find people and then engage with them. And uh, I've had a couple of people, we've got one guy now working for us uh, doing social media content. He works from home. Every, it's, it's like panel beating. First, it was an internship for three months. He came straight yeah. to Now that guy, is, is, he's got a job writing uh, social media content. And if you told him that six months ago, he would have said, nah, forget it. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so, so right. it's, it's all there. It's all there. And I think just a reminder to uh, creatives that are streaming with us, be out there, put your work out there, use social media. I mean, if someone is going to go to Facebook to look for a comedian or to look for a poet, how about you do share your work online? Because you will be found somewhere. So in the instance uh, where we talk about creative nestlings and you're creating all those different platforms and ideas for creatives to share their works and be found as well as manage their uh, creative enterprises. I want to know, since the pandemic, what exactly have you been able to do to help creatives? I, I know it's one thing to think about creating something. It's yet another to think about monetizing it. Worse off when there seem to be no one paying for my offer. So what have you been doing as Creative Nestlings to uh, help our creatives during this uh, past few months? Yeah. So what we've done uh, initially in the beginning, we, we were, we were co-hosting conferences. We put like Testmakers Africa as part of the, the thread conferences that they were holding. Um, mm -hmm. So we, And then we, we here locally in South Africa, we started doing a lot of Insta Lives featuring mm -hmm. creative to other creatives. Uh, so creative education is a big thing. So mm -hmm. everyone was on their phone. So we decided, okay, let's do some Insta Lives where we're discussing architecture with, with a young architect. Let's do fashion with someone young doing fashion, a writer, a PR manager, an artist. Let's have discussions with them uh, so they can teach masterclasses basically with other creatives and stuff uh, online and make them freely available because everybody was on, or everybody is online to today yeah. and stuff. So that's uh, available on our, on our Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and everything. So we've been doing a lot of those uh, online and, and also being a catalyst for other online uh, in other regions, or like in Uganda with KQ Hub, uh, helping them with their online uh, content and stuff. So building that mm -hmm. library of creative education, because it, it, you know in Africa for, for a long time, we've been learning from America and Europe in terms of creative education. 
on how yeah. to how to build, be a creative, how to monetize, and all that kind of stuff. So we decided to localize that. And also, I mean, when things started getting a bit better, we've been helping a lot of creatives getting work to, to get work and stuff. Um, like I mentioned, we've been casting a lot of ads uh, for, for, for like directors, young directors, getting a lot more young directors are uh, participating in the creative economy and stuff. First, first time mm-hmm. shooting an ad and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah. then I'm um, doing a lot of mural projects. Uh, so around coronavirus, we did a couple of mural projects with Kiratika, uh, where we got first time mural artists to, to get paid by the government to do murals in their own neighborhoods and stuff. So really forcing, because you know, if someone's a great visual artist, but then they've never painted a mural, but then they're never going to get a mural job unless someone bets on them. So we were willing to to bet on on, on, on a, a lot of young creatives. I think we've done about I think 20 murals so far. Uh, featuring first-time mural artists who are women, and that's like that's mm. like unheard of. It normally it takes yeah. a long time for you know a, a visual artist to transcend into a graffiti artist or mural artist and stuff. And no one, no brand is really willing to bet uh, on on young people that much uh, in the beginning. And now, though, some of those people are now getting brand offers to do murals, you know, across mm. Africa and stuff. And the the goal is to replicate that across Africa, to, you know, to get more opportunities that are uh, the, the money is there the talent is there it's just about someone willing to take a bet on young people to give them that first time opportunity mm-hmm. uh to create something that they, that they would never even th- thought about it you know like, like Peter yeah. mentioned someone from tiktok having to write content for social media you know unless you take a bet on someone you know on, on, then only can they really see that that they are valuable and they can do the actual work because they actually do it mm-hmm. better than most kids sitting in it, it, already sitting in agencies because they have that fresh eye that fresh mind to really tackle those things head on and stuff. So we we've been doing a lot of programs around that. Uh, we just published a book uh, with a friend of ours uh, by by way of illustration. So that was done. The book was done during the pandemic. It's now out mm-hmm. towards the well, seemingly the end of the pandemic and stuff. It's called by way of illustration. Uh, it's about mm-hmm. how to make this illustrator featuring twelve creatives. Uh, so we've helped make that book happen. Uh, we're doing our own conference later on the, in November with KQ Hub. So we're doing a lot more educational stuff to help creatives uh, get out there. But then behind the scenes, also getting jobs to creatives directly and, and helping them monetize directly. Because they, I mean, everyone everyone needs money now, right now, more than ever. Because you know mm-hmm. the, the usual hustling that we could do on the streets is not necessarily available. So we're trying yeah. to make it as easy as possible for young people to kind of get opportunities and jobs and stuff and scaling that, that across Africa and stuff. So mm-hmm. we we heavily on helping creatives monetize. Uh, even our talks, we're monetizing them as much as possible. If you if you speak at a talk, you're getting paid. Um, if you participate in a program, you're getting paid and all that kind of stuff. You know, murals getting paid well, and also forcing governments to to really put a bet on young people because they talk about right. they talk about twenty four seven, but they they're the least likely to put money towards young people who are starting out because of procurement. It, you know, so mm-hmm. we say okay, procure us, we'll procure the right talent. If anything goes wrong, we'll we'll take the bet. We'll, we'll take the brunt of that. Uh, situation and fix it and stuff but at least get it to the young careers that are starting out and stuff yeah so as far as opportunities are concerned they are opportunities for us to monetize on our creative offerings right i i yeah. really love that i really love that here in zambia i think we've seen a lot of youtubers come up a lot of podcasters come up and even as far as comedians people are in, in their homes uh, making jokes or what seems like jokes but all of a sudden they are marketing phones and they are marketing yeah. services and it's so beautiful to see but i'm still going to stick with you dylan uh, let's talk about um what then creatives need to do um as far as taking advantage of these opportunities because when you talk about procurement i'm just imagining there is some paperwork there is yeah. some legal legalities that follow through what can creatives do to ensure that when they are sought after they actually have their house in order and say okay i can do this i can do that i have this registration and this what can we do yeah, I think there's, there's a need for, for restructuring in terms of procurement. I don't like the current structure of procurement, for particularly for creative talent, especially mm-hmm. when you're working with, with, with agencies and, and, and big companies and stuff. They require so much paperwork that as a, as a creative, you, you know how to make a TikTok video. That's about mm-hmm. it, you know, and, and I understand you got to make the business and everything work. But I think there needs mm-hmm. to be some sort of leeway for, for freelance creatives, right, to say, okay, I think that's something, that, that's something that we're discussing here in South Africa, for example, with, with, with government and everything, on, on a new registration for a creative as a business. So you don't necessarily have to register as a normal business. You can register as a freelancer. And the paperwork okay. is less, how can I say, less arduous. It's, 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 it's less work, right? So it's yeah. just easy to be read, 
issue text clearance, uh, and then just somewhere on the database, on the government database, you are registered as a creative. Now you can get procured easily. But right now, unfortunately, we are being the, the, the same paper required for small businesses was required for creative, you know, and, yeah. and that, that even I don't like it and I'm running a business, you know, but I think right. I think most creators need to learn the, their own country laws in terms of procurement. They need to understand the tax requirements for their own countries. Uh, they, they need to, to learn the, the, the own uh, registration for business and like I said, so when, when a company does contact you to, to, to get something from you, you are, are mm -hmm. really yeah, available. And I know it's a lot of work, but I think you could invest some time and if you can, some money to get someone to do that for you, that's always the easiest way to do it. But if you can't, I think learning the basics of that, I think is super, super paramount. Just taking out one day a month just to just to monetize that and help because mm -hmm. when, when you get paid, you want it to be easy, right? So if you want to get paid, okay. it's everything that's required. You need a bank account, you need all that kind of stuff. I think just learning your own in-country stuff, so it's something we're working on, is creative nestlings to help creators in different parts of the country, in different parts of Africa. Say, so, okay, here are the laws in your country uh, okay. on how to register as a creative, as a business. Uh, so we're working on, on a handbook around that, like a freely available handbook that's going to allow that. So if you're in Nigeria, this is what's required in terms of government right. laws to get reward by an agency and by government. Here's where you should be registering. Here's where it's going to be available on our website for free. Uh, so little things like that, I think, are, are important because it's, it's quite painful to see. Like, I mean, here in South Africa, we saw there was a, there's a huge fund available right now for many creators in, 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 in South Africa, but most creators can apply for it literally because of paperwork, you know, but they can do the yeah. work. They, they're doing the work. They are working in theater. They're working in films, but literally because of, of, of a simple paper from, from text clearance of SARS, from CIPC and all that kind of stuff, they're struggling to get that money that's available to help them in this, in these tough times and stuff. So I think mm -hmm. that there's definitely a need for a push for better structures for creators, particularly on how they can get easily procured. Because um, like I mentioned, if you're a TikToker, you just want to do TikTok and that's it. <laughs> you know, you don't want to worry about, oh, now I have to have this paperwork, this legal document, this whatever, you know, I think we should make it a bit easier for creatives. And hopefully governments can start thinking about that uh, because the, the, the resources are available and tons are available. So I think just mm -hmm. making it easier is super paramount, yeah. I like how you put that. I think even in here in Zambia recently, we had a certain amount released towards creators and entertainers in Zambia and just to perhaps help them get by. But to yeah. this day, I'm still yet to come across any creative who's going to say, well, I applied for that and I'm at this stage because I don't really think anybody is thinking. First, you think about the processes that you have to go through and then you realize, OK, I could be creating something or how yeah. much is it that I'm even trying to apply? for so people seem to just hold back on that but yesterday uh, during our chat or the other day you actually mentioned creating a support system uh, I've seen there are some questions that are coming uh, through about two of them uh, for Peter but before I get to those questions uh, I wanted Dylan to also talk a bit about uh, creating a support system I think you you there's a way you explained it in how firstly if I'm a startup I'm a creative all I think about is creating something. So I'm not really thinking about be it registration, be it my accounts, be it, and all these are necessary if I'm going to get more business to come in. How does a support system work? Who do I need in my support system in order for me to build a sustainable business long term? I think I, I always say you, you need a, like a friends who are lawyers, accountants, and everything, right? Always keep that mm -hmm. circle around you. Your, school, your schoolmates you went to high school with who are now those lawyers to give some time to you, to advise you and stuff. And, and it, you know, sometimes like just making those friends is, is quite helpful, right? Because then yeah. they can quickly consult with you to say, okay, you already said business, oh, this way you should go to register business. You wanna go do that, so I should need to do your tax documents. Oh, I can help you with tax, mm -hmm. whatever. Because keeping that tight circle is super, super important. Also other creatives also to see how they've done it. I think that's a good mm -hmm. support system to all have. Like always have a few creatives that are in different disciplines or different, um, industries to you that can help you when you need help that can advise you when you need advice that's a good support system to have a create as a creative but also have those lawyers accountants tax people to just to advise yeah. you when necessary and, 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 and possible most hubs across africa have those people available so i think mm -hmm. reaching out to, to to those organizations and saying oh i just want to know about this a b and c and even now online i'm seeing a lot more videos coming up on youtube and instagram during the pandemic on how to file for tax on how to, to raise their business and all that kind of stuff. Most countries yeah. have it easy. Uh, there's a website where you can just raise their business and all that kind of, Now banks 
are re- doing registrations for businesses for, for for small businesses. So they actually go to a bank and actually they can register a business for you and give you an account, give you a text number, all that kind of stuff. So now you can actually do that, all that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of support system you should have. I think uh, mm-hmm. that's super important to have. Those that that tight knit community. Uh, attend other people's events because now when you attend an event, there's probably going to be a lawyer there. There's probably going to be a tax person. There's going to be another creator that's more successful than you that could offer you yeah. that support. You know, uh, like for me, for example, I started building creative nestings. What I did, I reached out to other agencies that were big already. You know, you know, and, and said, "Oh, Ogilvy, I would like to come in and see how you guys work and how you guys monetize your creativity and stuff and how you guys structure your businesses, so I can look, I can see. Okay, that's a big goal." But then how do yeah. I get the work backwards, basically? So having that support system, you can reach out to people. Most people nowadays are free to have a conversation. You know, they are online anyway. So, so, so I think just asking and reaching out to people is a good way to be a, a good support system for yourself and stuff. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for that. Now, there are people reaching out to us uh, through uh, Q&A. And so some of the questions that we have here, a uh, question from Daniel, uh, directed to Peter, says, uh, Peter mentioned it's hard to find animated videos in Zambia. My question is, is it possible to connect with other African countries and work collaborated projects or work on collaborated uh, projects? And... Um, Another question from Daniel is, uh, do we have a freelance platform uh, where like Upwork in Africa, please share us a link if there's any. So Peter, this one is for you. Is it possible to connect with other African countries and work on collaborated projects? Well, yes, Uh, Daniel, yes it is. Um, uh, It's not that easy, but you can make your own networks. And I was absolutely delighted to find out that Dylan's doing that. So, yeah. like Dylan, I don't don't ask me, ask Daniel, ask um, Daniel, don't ask me, ask Dylan. He looks like the man who's going to hook you up with jobs, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, and the like. So, yes, and you know what? I think it's it's important to, you know, we we all sometimes become a little bit Africa centric, and we yeah. think Africa is a special place. But you know what? Why why only want to hook up with creators from Africa? You can hook up with creators from all over the world. On, right. on some of the other platforms, and 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 you know, there's uh, our business is is very very much on marrying marrying creative and strategy. So it's it's a bit Western driven in terms of that and and capitalistic kind of thinking and all that sort of stuff. But um, so our structures are quite are quite formal in terms of strategy and process. But um, I th- I think. Uh, there, there isn't, as Dylan is the first one I've come across uh, creative nesting where it looks like there's some kind of collaboration going in. It, sound, it sounds amazing. Um, mm-hmm. and, but if you were an animator and you can get work from anywhere in the world, just the same way as recently I've done work with people from, from as I said, from Turkey, Pakistan and Bangladesh. So there's no yeah. reason, and I've, I chatted with a couple of guys online, animators from West Africa, a guy in Ghana, another chap in in uh, in um, in uh, in uh, uh, Nigeria, uh, very very keen, want to do the job, promising and promising, and the same with people in other countries. So even uh, even on those platforms, download Fiverr, whatever, there's a few of them. There's there's it is so transparent because people can see the ratings that you that you get given mm-hmm. after the job. How was it easy to deal with this person? Uh, so. Uh, it's, everything is accountable, transparent. The deadlines, everything is set up front, so um, that that works very well. And uh, Daniel, I'd I'd encourage you to to get hold of uh, uh, Dylan more on that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just mentioned the need to look beyond. And it, it is really good to get to collaborate. I've, I've always looked for collaborations in Zambia, but then eventually you realize, oh, wait, have I actually worked with a South African? One of the good examples I can give right now is of a friend who's studying at a European university, studying theater to be precise, and actually doing an internship with a US-based theater company while working and living in Kitwe. And perhaps those are some of the advantages of uh, be it online and everything coming 
coming online and you can work in the US and who knows what you get to learn and apply back here at home. So I love that you mentioned that. So the question that was asked concerning platforms and just where we can find these, I'm just trying to um, get to the question and uh, somebody's asking for platforms. Where do we go? Where uh, do we find this? And it will say that it was Dylan's question. So if somebody is looking for creative nestlings, where do they find you? Yeah, so we can go to our website, creativenesslings.com, uh, mm -hmm. Facebook, nestlings. But I think, like yeah. Peter mentioned, uh, you should check out all these other platforms because there's there's a work there's always work on there. You know, there's work for copywriters, there's always work for designers, animators. Like Behance is an is an incredible platform, but it's lacking yeah. in African beauty. You know, so 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 Behance is a great owned by Adobe, and they do a lot of seminars, conferences, and all that kind of stuff. But also, a lot of people are looking for creatives on those platforms. And it's a mm -hmm. global platform. You know, so reach out. There's like if you if you Google. Simple Google like uh, creative platforms, you'll see Fiverr, uh, Behance, Underpinned. So, so make sure you're, you're available on all those platforms. And don't just be focused okay. on oh, South Africa or whatever and stuff. Focus on mm -hmm. the, the world. You, you can work from home. Uh, animation requires just you and your computer and your, your, and your Wacom tablet. So why, yeah. why, why try to limit you know, yourself to your desk? So, so be, be available in the world. Put your work up on Instagram. Put up some, some, some characters, you know, some, some different different things i mean here in south africa we're seeing a lot of uh, animators being commissioned for netflix shows you know you know because they are putting their work to the out there on instagram on, on, your, mm -hmm. on your facebook and all that kind of stuff even if it's personal work i think put it out and stuff on every platform available Be, make the most noise you're guaranteed to get some good jobs out there you're guaranteed to make a lot of money elsewhere and stuff besides mm -hmm. your own your own immediate uh, locality and stuff so be available uh, everywhere and, and us as creative nestlings we we are we are building the platform so that we are able to market creatives to the world not just africa only right yeah. so we want to make sure that all the creatives are available to the world because we get a lot of requests netflix is always looking for content They're always looking for shows and and you you find that actually it's quite hard to find in a, in a readily available creative because they are waiting for opportunity instead of creating the opportunity for themselves and stuff and be visible and be, be available you know, be available everywhere possible. You, you need to make sure that you're making noise there and stuff. Yeah. Okay. He says making noise. I always love to say, if you don't talk, you won't eat. So yeah. make sure that you are talking. Talk to as many people as possible. And lately in Zambia for um, other creators, we've seen a lot of TV stations opening up, not just in Lusaka, but other parts of Zambia as well. Knock on their doors. They are looking for content. That license requires them to have uh, content be 24 yep. hours and just one minute of radio and TV. It's quite a long time. So are there any things that you can create that can go on TV or on radio? Think about that. But also, uh, thank you. So yeah, thank you so much to TK Nambi. Did I get that right? Yes, TK Nambi who asked that question concerning um, where can we find you and uh, where can we share our content? So uh, another question here says, both Peter and Dylan have managed to build careers and businesses around their creativity. What skills beyond creativity do young people need to develop and, and trans to transform their creativity into? Well, um, I'll kick off and then Dylan can add his... What, what other... Yes, please, Peter. Yeah, I think um, focus is the number one, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. do, a, do something and do it well. Rather right. Than try, too many people try to do everything. I see people going wrong. You know, they, mm -hmm. they do something well and then they say, oh, I'm a designer and they do a few jobs to design and then they see the ads in a campaign and they say, oh, let me start mm -hmm. an advertising agency. Then they completely lose focus. And speciality. Mm -hmm. so you, you, you have to start with a speciality first and then build to generalization later. As you become right. more, more successful and as you become more experienced, you'll be able to deal with many, many, many different things. Rather mm -hmm. focus on doing one or two things and doing them well. If it's animation, if it's logo design, if it's even if it's just t-shirt design, um, whatever, do that well, focus on it, learn, uh, really commit to develop uh, producing a good product and then you'll start getting some traction. But, right. um, and also you really have to be determined, Tim. Eh? Uh, you really, really have to be determined uh, because when you do something, you think it's wonderful, uh, then other people don't think it's quite so wonderful. We, we, we have that, we 
boxing matches the whole time with clients. We think it's great. Client thinks it's rubbish, or we sometimes we don't think it's so good, and the client thinks it's wonderful. You know, so uh, you never know. So I, I think really determination and 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 passion. I mean, I keep right. telling people when Tupac was writing, he used to write the whole time. He never stopped writing. That was in his blood. Okay. Right. He was getting drunk or in whatever he was writing. <laughs> And the same with great artists. I mean, they just like Beethoven just composed music all the time. Even when he was deaf, he still kept doing it. So if you want mm -hmm. to get want to monetize the creative industry, you have to have a good product. And you'll only right. have a good product if that product is backed with 100% passion. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And uh, Dylan, please share. He's talking about forecast, determination, passion, doing something and doing it well. What do you have to add? Yeah, I think I'm on the same path as, as Peter on that. Uh, you, you have to be really be focused and have a plan of mm -hmm. well, what is the long-term goal that you're trying to see? Okay, if you if you want to be a, a great animator, okay, what does a great animator really look like, right? Um, right. And you look at examples and see, okay, cool. Here are some key examples around the world. And you should, they just look to Africa, and look to the world and say, okay, what else is out there? Who are the best animators in the world? What do they look like? Read their stories and what kind of stuff. Do your research basically as a creative. I think that's super mm -hmm. important. Most creative, they tend to focus on themselves, and that's it. I think doing your right. research is important, right? The best, but the best creators out there are the most research oriented people. They they know what's happening in the world. They watch the world. They might not necessarily participate mm -hmm. all the time, but they're watching what's happening in the world, where the trends are. They don't necessarily follow them, but then they're seeing what the world needs and what the world is, is, is the gaps and opportunities that are available and stuff. I think it's super important to to, to have that in your. In, in your basically in your in your armor right and then once you have a plan then work backwards and say okay what do i do today to get to that plan what do i do tomorrow and then see okay if i want to monetize how much do i really need for myself to survive from a freelance creative because i think most creatives never ask themselves that question how much do i need personally to survive not the business not the whatever okay what do i need as a creative uh today to survive so i can pay for electricity rent all that kind of stuff i think creators forget that yeah. it's very important personal mm -hmm. uh taking care of and also once you once you are making money, how do you save it? How do you how, how do you now start building from that? You no, know, because now creators make money; they go buy the best shoes and all that. It's great, yeah. good, but I think also making sure that tomorrow you can be alive and you, you can create, mm -hmm. because you can't be hungry and create great work, right? You have to create, create sometimes creating great work requires a bit of luxury and a bit and a bit of you know you don't want the landlord knocking on your door, you know, when you're trying yeah. to make the animation you know you've ever made for a client. So I think planning is super, super, super important. I think creators forget that in, in, in managing their, their resources and opportunities are available to them and stuff. And also looking, looking at your mental health, you know, like now it's COVID-19 is, is a huge crisis global. It's a global crisis. I think yeah. talking to people and seeing how the people are coping and all that kind of stuff and seeing mm -hmm. what, what mistakes are you making? How do you make them better? So, so really being out there and participating in the economy and, and the community that exists in the, creative, the global creative circle, uh, even in mm -hmm. your city, your country and all that kind of stuff. I think it's super important as a creative, and and I think those are some of the things you can do to become a better creative, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and then once you are better creative, then educating other creatives because now when you're educating other creatives, you also become a better creative. And then they're asking you questions. They they that can help you become better and stuff. And then if you want to diversify your portfolio, go ahead. But I think like Peter said, first gen first specialize and then generalize. You know, for mm -hmm. example, I'm a creative myself, but I, but no one really knows what I do because what I've done is I, I specialize in, in like I I I've been building websites, designing apps, uh, mm -hmm. and, and now I'm starting to get into films. So I've directed my first documentary last year, but it's taken a long time to get to that kind of stuff because right. I, I wanted to, I, okay, I'm I'm gonna be really good at tech. Okay, cool. Now I can build a website within a day, an app, whatever. I can do it. Cool. What's mm -hmm. next? Oh, I'm films okay how do i make a film so so connecting with other creatives in my um, network to say okay how do i become better or now when i monetize film how do i monetize a film and stuff so that's a journey so i understand that it's a journey you're never going to be the the ne the, the same as everybody everyone's going to have a different some people blow up today uh if you mm -hmm. that tomorrow some people blow up 10 years and then they have a lasting career so i think yeah. making sure that your journey and owning uh whatever mm -hmm. opportunities and mistakes you make and whatever success you make is super super important uh, I think as a creative and stuff, yeah. Right, I, putting everything together, passion, determination, creativity, and name it, just start. I think that's the yeah. start something and make sure that you find yourself in circles of people that think alike that can help you build on that and just having the long-term goal and perhaps the 
immediate gratification, taking that off for just even a few seconds uh, and just working on your art. So thank you so much for sharing all that. There's a question that has just come in now and just as well towards uh, the end of uh, this discussion. Uh, someone wants to know, Peter, are you on social media? Are you on Twitter, Facebook? Someone would like to connect with you. Yeah, I think uh, the safest place to connect with, the, with me without seeing too many sarcastic comments is on LinkedIn. <laughs> So, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Also, All right. Uh, um, my wife almost left me after I discovered TikTok for three months, but I just use, I consume there. I'm not a creator on TikTok. <laughs> Okay, all right. And Dylan, where do they get to connect with you in case someone wants to connect with you? Yeah, I mean, ev everywhere possible. So Dylan, you search my name, Dylan Espiri. Uh, it's just Creative Nestlings. You can DM us. My mm -hmm. email is Dylan at Creative Nestlings .com. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm available chat anytime to any creative that wants to, to just talk to someone. So I'm available right. and stuff. So they can just hit me up and we can jump on a WhatsApp call or something and stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And I do believe that uh, Creative Nestling's website has been shared on all platforms in case you want to list your uh, creative business on that platform or learn more about what they are doing going forward. And so in about a minute, 30 seconds, I'll allow you each to just uh, share your final words with us before we end. Peter, you can go first. Well, yes. Um... Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, please. We're, we're hungry for talent. We want people with new perspectives. Um, the industry has changed. Come, it's a very, very good industry to be in, despite what people are saying. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, my life philosophy, one of my life philosophies is uh, the more, well, not mine, but I, that I learned is the more things change, the more they remain the same. It's a French expression. That's true. So don't, let, don't let technology scare you. And, and also even to older people, if it's not just young, you know, the, mm -hmm. there's, um, the, there's, there's a big backlash actually in the advertising business about um, mm -hmm. older people who have been put out to pasture. They've got so much to offer because yeah. they think that business should be run by young people and the business is suffering as a result. But I think in, in part in words, yes, creative is, is, is it's one of the best things you can do. For me, writing copy and coming up with concepts is it's not even work. It's fun. So, uh, so you, somebody once said it's the best fun you can have with your clothes on, the most fun you can have with your clothes on. So uh, definitely go for it. Uh, follow your passion. Uh, and if you, just to echo what Dylan said, if you, if you do your research and, mm -hmm. and you really, really push and you're determined to make your work succeed, it will. It might not take one month, uh, mm -hmm. you know, try and try and try again, it, but you'll get there eventually. All right. Thank you so much, Dylan. Yeah, I mean, I, I echo what Peter said. Um, I think just starting is important. Um, just start. If you have, if you, if yeah. you want to draw, draw, please put it out. See how people react to it. It's not about what the how people react. It's about you getting out. That euphoria of getting out will actually trigger something. You know, there's a science to this. You know, so 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 like Peter said, it's the most fun you can ever have with the clothes on. It is a fun industry to work in. You get to create magic. I mean, people don't mm. realize. Like, don't value the creative industry, but they don't realize they consume it every day. All the TV shows they're watching, all the Netflix, all the technology that they're using, it's, part, it's all part of the creative industry. And I think yeah. it's a billions and billions of dollars are made every year in the creative industry in Africa alone. So why not participate? You know, mm -hmm. if you have a skill and a talent, do your work and, and just make it, make it fun, make it amazing. The world mm -hmm. needs your creativity. Don't hide it. You know, right. the world needs it now and today and so more than ever with, with COVID-19 and everything. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Peter and Dylan and to everyone. I hope we can continue with the conversation through the various uh, platforms that we have. And just a quick one. This was brought to you by Social Enterprise Academy Zambia. And this is in collaboration with Bongo Hive. So follow those platforms. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you all. Thank you very much. Thank you.